this is, this is, this is. After being in Texas for, I don't know, you've been like probably five plus years now. Mm -hmm. What is it like to look back on California? You feel good about your decision? Um, I do. I do. But I do still feel like it's a little too hot here for me in summers. <laughs> Every time summer rolls around in like March. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, Already, already, I'm all, I'm shocked every year at how how soon in the year we we turn on the air conditioner. I, you know, I'm surprised you don't have it on all year round. I know that it, it gets cold <laughs> in Texas, and um, basically, same thing with me. You know, I don't know if I can handle it all year round. So kudos to you. But being sort of a transplant, part time Texas guy, one we did one summer in Texas. We did once, uh -huh. <laughs> and my wife was like, um, "No, let's let's uh, <laughs> let's spend summers in Washington because Washington is the best place in oh, summer. Yeah. Summer is the best, so it kind of makes sense to if you have the you know the ability to have a situation where you can go back and forth like we do. Um, and it's not easy, by the way. It's really it, it taps your resources quite a bit. It's it's kind of insane, but." But you you do it because it's an emotional thing, you know. You you don't do it because it it's logical. So right, right. No, I I totally. I if I could do that, I would. I would. I would be somewhere else for uh, probably June, July, August, September. <laughs> what have you been doing during the summer times then? Because it's so hot. So there is like limited amount of time you can be outside. Maybe like yeah. early in the morning, later in the evening. But in the in nighttime, it's still super hot. It's just not. Yeah. It's bearable. Yeah. But it's weird I mean, I feeling. think that that might actually be the roughest thing is night, how how nighttime is still hot, because even, you know, I grew up in central California where it does get pretty hot in summer and I didn't like that either. But at least there was only like one or two weeks out of the year where it stayed warm at night. It always would cool off at night to where it's a refreshing, maybe not cold, but like a, a you know, a more tolerable temperature. But San Antonio, it's like. There are a lot of nights where it's 80 degrees is the low and it's just, it's yeah. not that that's hot, but I mean, when the humidity is, you know, 90% or something, it's, it's still like, you can't open the windows. That's for sure. No, not at all. I spent a lot of hot nights in Texas, just sitting there yeah. writing, working on, you know, the internet or whatever it is. And it is a weird thing. It's like, it's like. If you're from Fresno, California, you know hot because it gets hot there. Yeah, and it gets yeah, hot at not night. Far from where I grew up, it, it gets hot at night, but it it was nothing like Texas. It's nothing like that. Like that's wild. Um. Anyway, we, we here we are. I mean, I'm I'm up in in Bremerton right now, but um, the more I work with MXPX stuff, and you know, we have the new album that came out and all that, the less I can be in Texas because Texas for me is. It's not it's not that I'm not working in Texas, but I don't have the well, I don't have the band there. Um, yeah. I don't have all my equipment, all the things that I would, you know, have built up here. So for me, Texas is like about ideas. It's about thinking, it's about writing, it's about making plans. And sometimes like, you know, some of the, some of those things you can get into motion as far as like talking to people and all that. But um, so I've been spending a lot of time in Bremerton. And summer was great. Um, you know, we traveled and, and all that. But um, we uh, we definitely have been busy, busy, you know, traveling. We just kept, got back from Indonesia, which was fun. Um, yeah, I saw that. That's but awesome. hot, hot like you're – like hot like Texas. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like more humid. But um, honestly, I don't think the nights were as bad as Texas is in the summertime. <laughs> it's, it's bad. So – what do you, you know, we just, Halloween's done, um, but you have an album that's called Death Dreams. You know, it's very scary. We'll talk <laughs> a lot. I want to talk a lot about that. Um, but are you a Halloween person? Do you do you dress up for Halloween? Is it something that you're like, mate, sometimes if there's a reason to, I do. Uh, the reason I ask is because our house in Texas, uh, in Waco, that street right next to her like right in front of us and down is where 
everyone goes to trick or treat and it's oh, a huge uh -huh. occasion and our neighbor has like a DJ and it's like a spooky, <laughs> you know, oh, in wow. a spooky trailer and everything. And, and there's just lines of kids going down the street, which blows my mind because we have trick or treating up here and we, we took the kids trick or treating and it was fun and we went around the neighborhood, but we have one street that we kind of go down. Um, but it's nothing like Texas. So like, what, what was it like for you this year? And are, are you, I guess, a Halloween person? I do love Halloween. I also love dressing up, but I oftentimes don't put in as much effort as I could. Usually my costume is kind of like not, it's like halfway there, I would say. When's your birthday? Uh, When's your birthday, by the way? Are you, a, what's your sign? <laughs> what's my sign? I'm yeah. a Leo. A Leo? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know what that means exactly, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm a Leo that's nearly a cancer because I'm like right oh, on the edge. Oh, I think that's Leo the same as my wife. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, my birthday's on July 23rd. Do you like to or, do you like to organize? Uh, I do, um, <laughs> but I could be better at it in my own in my own space. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. I know what you mean. I'm kind of like that too, actually. Um, I've got this OCD thing in some ways, but yet I. Like if you looked around right now, it's messy. It's messy because uh -huh. I'm working to get things done or this or that. But if if the plan is to clean, I am all about it, right? Yeah. But if it's not yeah. part of my routine, not part of what I'm doing today, I let it get messy, and and that's my downfall, I think. But but I think the the, the work around that is is to add it into your your plans, add it into your routine yeah. or your you know your to do yeah. list. But um, that's what I was doing today. I was cleaning. And I, I was oh, like yeah. rushing through it to get over here uh, because I procrastinated and I was doing other things. And I, you know, all the things we do in the morning sometimes that, that we know, oh, it's, a, it's, it's like my lazy Saturday, even though I literally do the same thing every day, no matter what day it is. Just about. <laughs> just about. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> Halloween. So do people come to your house to trick or treat? Or no, no, no. I live on a street that's um, that's not very conducive to, to trick or treating. So um, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we we don't we don't get trick or treaters, which is fine with me. I think it has to be kind of the right the right neighborhood, you know, to like yeah. a, a neighborhood where people are expected to come. Like, I feel like if I lived in a neighborhood like that, that would be really fun mm -hmm. to be like, oh, all the kids are going to come. They got to make sure to have candy and decorations and whatnot. But um, I don't have enough, uh, time or energy. I feel like to be the one person on the street that's like going ham with the decorations and the candy, yeah. you know, just to like dr to bring people, you know, I'm kind of like, eh, I'd rather just watch a movie or, <laughs> you know, do something, do something else as opposed to waiting in case kids are coming by. No, that makes sense that I think that's the same for us. And our house doesn't get any trick or treaters cause it's off of the road and, <laughs> you know, a couple streets up is sort of like the suburban um, cliche, kind of like nice looking Halloween neighborhood. Everything's decorated. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, okay. I mean, let's talk about this record. It came out late in October, October 19th, uh, 2023. So um, Death Dreams. You know, I had seen you putting out videos and releasing songs for this record and I'm very happy for you. So congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, survival Thank you. Guide is, is you know, the, the name you go over, uh, you know, go with. So don't look up Emily Whitehurst. Look up Survival Guide on your, your platforms, everybody, when you, when you look for the album. But it's out now everywhere, so you can listen to it everywhere you find music. Death Dreams. Now, what a title. Like, heavy title. <laughs> Cause isn't sleeping kind of just like dying for a little bit and then we like are reborn in a way, but <laughs> yes. so tell me about it. What was, what's this about death? Well, dreams. it's, I mean, the death dreams title is very literal. Um, I had, which I, I almost didn't go with it because I was like, that's, it's so literal. I had multiple dreams where I died, mm. which is not, it's not common for me to remember my dreams even. Or I'll just remember like a feeling from the dream as opposed to 
the entire dream or anything specific about it. So I had a few dreams where I died and they were all really profound for me. So I decided to write some songs about it, you know, about each one. One of them did not make it to the record because I didn't finish that one. But um, <laughs> your face, you're like, what? I'm just listening. I'm like, OK, go on, go on. So what, what was the first song you wrote about your dreams uh, on this record? The first one I wrote was Lady Neptune. I had a dream where um, I had a dream where uh, there was a battle happening in front of me, and I was I was basically standing on a battlefield, and uh, it was very upsetting. What as era it would be? Um, I don't know. It was very it was very like hand to hand combat, like. Mm. People, I don't remember what what type of weapons they were using, but it was very like people. To, it wasn't, you know, like bombing from afar or anything. It was like people actually maybe stabbing each other. I don't know. Mm. It was. I don't remember what the, whether they had uniforms on. I just knew it was. It was a battle. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to stop it, and somehow in this dream, I knew that the only way I could stop it, this is, it sounds so ridiculous, but um, I knew that if I drowned myself, that I would then come back to life as this like powerful being and that I would be able to stop this battle. I'd, I have no idea where this came from or why, <laughs> but uh, okay. it was, you know, conveniently there was a pond right there. And you, so you, I was like, you killed yeah. yourself. You committed suicide in a dream. I did. I did. Were you scared? Do you remember being scared to do I it? I wasn't. That's you what weren't? was the most interesting thing is that, I mean, I was kind of like. So you knew you were more, dreaming. I didn't. I didn't know I was dreaming. So I you're not knew. lucid dreaming. You're just regular mm -hmm. dreaming. Yeah. Which Then that, that, I think that is what made it so striking to me is that in the dream, I was just like, I felt more, I guess, nervous than anything about it because, you know, the, the unknown of mm -hmm. drowning myself. But, um, but I, I felt confident that if I could get over that, that I would be able to stop this battle. And so I just, I just did it. And I actually went into the water and submerged myself and then just had to kind of coach myself through breathing the water in, which is really crazy. Yeah, that feels insane. It feels like <laughs> yeah. one of the worst deaths imaginable is drowning, although I don't think it probably is because people say that... It's like peaceful or something. Peaceful in a way, yeah. Like you, once you're, once you like let the water in, you're just, you're done and, and then you... It must be the panic of not breathing at first that's the worst part. And then after yeah. that, you're unconscious, but... It's it's wild that you remember in such detail. So what else do you remember about drowning? Like you're uh, you're trying to make yourself breathe in the water. What did that did, did yeah. you did you like cough underwater in a way or um it's almost like you you your body knew what it would be like. Yeah, I I remember um at first I was holding my breath and then I had to be like, "Okay, just um just just act like you're breathing, you know, just like breathe in the water and just let it, let it do its thing. And, um, I just did it calmly and, uh, it was, it was weirdly not panic. Um, it was very strange. I mean, it was not that I plan on drowning myself by any means, but, um, it was an interestingly calm, uh, death. Let's say. Wow. <laughs> I'm just picturing it. It's insane. So yeah, why I, did you yeah. think that would stop? If you didn't know you're in a dream, like if you knew you're in a dream, killing yourself will stop that. But if you're not in a dream, killing yourself won't actually, it'll just kill yourself and people right. will keep fighting. So <laughs> you must have somehow known I'm in a dream, like yeah, in the back well, of your mind, right? In the I, back of the back of your mind. I felt like it was more like when you're in a dream and you say your I mean I don't know what your how often you remember your dreams but I will have dreams sometimes where I'm like I'm in my house and I know it's my house but it looks nothing like my house you know mm -hmm. it's like this is some random house but in my dream I'm like 
oh, I'm home. It's it or or uh, talking to someone who you know is I don't know your your boss or something, but you actually don't have a job or a boss. You know, like yes. um, sometimes you just know things in your dream for for no reason. <clears throat> you know, it's just like it's like a given in the dream, and that's that's more how I felt about about this knowledge about drowning myself. And I think if it were a lucid dream, don't you think I would just be like, hey, this is a dream. Why? I just, just stop, you know, like stop everything, you know, like, have you ever been able to lucid dream? Have you ever tried? I would love to be able to lucid dream. I have had a few dreams where I realized I was dreaming and I partially did something about it, but not uh, both of them were, um, I think there were only two times, but both of them involved me being like, hey, I can fly. <laughs> I can I'm fly. Kidding. It's like the matrix, <laughs> like learning a new skill, like boom, you just yeah. know it. That's wild. You know, you asked if I dream. I mean, I do. Everybody dreams, right? Um, if you sleep, <laughs> if you sleep, you can dream. But I don't remember my dreams very often. I used to back when I was, had a simpler thought process, I guess. I don't know <laughs> what it is. I just don't. Like when I sleep, I sleep hard if I can fall asleep. Uh, I've, when I was in, the only reason I say that is because when I was in Indonesia, I didn't sleep at all. Like I, the jet lag and the the no the schedule of like not having a full night's sleep. Like we had like a few hours a night and a few hours like during the day, and that's it. So like it was all junked up. And um, so anyway, back to dreaming. I I never remember my dreams, and I thought maybe I would on this trip. You know, if I was in a new place, doing new things, um, not having any sleep aids, like that kind of thing. But nope, still did not remember any of my dreams. And I don't, I don't know, maybe I, maybe it comes out in other ways, you know, with my crazy ideas, but, um, have you always remembered your dreams this vividly? No, that's, what's weird about it is that I, I rarely remember my dreams either. Like I'll kind of remember, you know, when I wake up, I'll be like, oh, this person was in my dream that I haven't seen for a while or something. I'll remember being with them or I'll remember, oh, we were at a restaurant, but that's it. Like, I can't really remember what happened or and that's even that is kind of rare for me to remember details about my dream. It's usually gone when I wake up. Do you. OK, so did you write down these dreams, these ones? Um, um, or are you still not, just remembering yeah, no, I didn't write them down right away, I don't think, because they, they were so vivid that I didn't really need to. That's good. Wow. Yeah, I, I've always heard that, you know, you should write down your, your dreams right when you wake up, you know, if you remember mm -hmm. them. Because then, like, a few minutes later, you'll be like, what was that? Ah, I can't remember. You know, that's just yeah. me in a nutshell. Like, what was that two minutes ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um Whatever I'm focused on, I can usually, I can remember. But um, what about the other dreams? So so you drown yourself, um, yeah. Lady Neptune. That's a really good, that's one of my favorite songs on the record. Like, uh, oh, you know, you. ones that kind of stuck out to me. Um, it's got a real, like, kind of hook to it when it starts. Really cool. And, and by the way, the style of the record is so you. It's It's like, you were always into punk rock, but like, You've been playing keyboards, you've been playing bass, doing all the things that a new wave girl should. And I, and I really feel like this 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 record really suits your style and from what I know, you know, your personality. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool to hear your ideas come to life and and I can I can just imagine you having these ideas and fleshing them out and uh trying things on your you know your keyboard and and playing your bass and it's it's cool to hear it's cool to hear so again congratulations um thank you i'm so, stoked to get to talk to you about it because i feel like we the first time we talked was when i was first like really struggling with potentially writing an album it was long mm -hmm. ago you know it was like years ago yes and you were kind of like oh just i don't i don't remember exactly what you said but it was really helpful to get me to actually start start doing it and then I, it's finally it finally happened absolutely <laughs> finally came together i remember that and and i don't know exactly what i said either but i probably said s something along the lines of 
just write through it, even if you mm-hmm. think it's a bad idea. Just write that, put it away, and then write another one. And and those great songs for the record will come, and they did. Um, and and that's just going to continue to happen. I think you know now that you've done the one record, you know, uh, uh, is it your first full length for Survival Guide? Or have it's you done not, it? but it's the first one that you know, I've done by myself. Right, and it's the one, it's the first one in a long time, and I feel like it's got yeah. a different sound to it than yeah. the first, you know, things you did. And you've done a lot of singles over the years. You've done a, lot, a ton of covers, um, and so like, yeah, it just feels like it, the timing was good. Like the timing was right to after you've done all that other stuff to like put out another full length. It's almost like a, a, a new. Well, it is a new era. I feel like for you, yeah. Um, but this dream situation is <laughs> absolutely something that you new that you've tapped into lyrically, right? Like, um, what was the other? What was the other song or the other dream that that yeah. you killed yourself? I want to, or maybe you didn't kill yourself <laughs> in this one. I don't know the, yeah, so the story. The, the other one was um, it was a dream where I was driving this one was like uh i didn't kill myself it was a it was Mm. i was driving i was by myself i was about to crash it was it's um i'll picture you it's the last track on there and um it i mean it says it very plainly in the song too uh because i was gonna crash and i was so sure that i was gonna die and i in those moments i just wanted my husband's face to be the last thing I was thinking about when I died. And it was, and then when I woke up, I was like, wow, that was, um, that was, I had never thought about like, what wow. if I were to die, what would I, what would I think about? You know, what would my last thought be? So it was like, it was like, I, my unconscious self told me what I would do if I were about to die, I would be picturing Picturing him and thinking about love and just trying to be, I don't know, trying to connect somehow. So it was very, wow. yeah, it was very um, emotional. It that's, was hard to write it. It was hard to sing it. <laughs> that's intense. Have you ever cried when you were writing a song? Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, I guess that yeah, would be sure. the one. Yeah. yeah. That's a very real thing. And, and I have as well. And... It's almost silly in a way, like especially for somebody like me to like, you know to cry, but like I cry. I mean, I, I I was my wife and I were watching this a couple years ago, maybe like two years ago. We were watching a documentary on Val Kilmer, and uh-huh. I've heard about it. I haven't the one where he's his voice is gone. His voice is kind of messed up. Yeah, he's got I don't know he had throat cancer or something like that. Mm-hmm. And we were just like sitting down not really thinking about it, you know, just like, let's put this on and check it out. And we start watching this. We're just like, just so emotional. So like, we're both trying to hold back our tears and we're like, we had no idea this was going to just like destroy us. I'm just like getting teary thinking about it, but that it's, it's always about what a story brings and dredges up in your own life. You know, mm-hmm. and and Val Kilmer has a lot of he's been in a lot of movies that, you know, have been both part of both of our lives before we knew each other. And then when we were newly married. So it's just like, holy shit. Wow, that that we had no idea that somebody that we don't even really think about really ever. I mean, honestly, don't I mean, he's great, but I don't think about Val Kilmer too often. Yeah. But, the, you know, to see that documentary just made me absolutely wrecked um it's almost like you know people have rules like i don't watch dogs dog movies no because the dog yeah. always dies at the end and you ball your eyes out and it's just like no old yeah. yeller and all that so yeah so so songwriting is you would people don't talk about this i i guess i, mean, I haven't really heard too much about about the emotions of, of getting, you know, pulling out everything that's truly like part of you. Um, can you talk a little bit more about maybe even that, that song in particular, but anything that comes to mind as far as like trying to get these emotions out and how hard that can be as a songwriter? Yeah. 
Um, well, I definitely felt like this record in general, and especially that song, um, were lyrics that I don't think I would have written if I weren't solo. And I was noticing that as I went, like certain songs were uh, like really strong emotions for me. And um, I thought to myself, like uh, oftentimes, I mean, I've always written my own lyrics um, and I've written a lot of songs over the years, but I always kept a piece of representing a group. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I feel like I never, I feel like that maybe held me back a little bit from some of the like really deep emotions. And uh, I, you know, not having a band with me and being totally alone, I just decided, yeah, I'm going to write about things that make me feel really strongly. And I don't have to, I don't have to wonder, you know, like, how does my guitar player feel about this? <laughs> right. You know, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with anyone else. So, um, so, I mean, I don't know if you ever, if you ever feel that way, if you ever like, um, you know, for your solo, cause you've written solo stuff too, as yeah. opposed to MXPX stuff. Like, is there, is there a difference for you? When there, you're writing? there is a difference. Um, usually not when I'm writing, but when I decide, okay, this song maybe is a little too, I don't know, whatever. And then yeah. but with MXPX, um, I, we've done a lot over the years as far as difference of styles and lyrics and things like that. But at this point, I think I'm a little more focused on what I think MXPX is, which is life lessons, positivity, having fun, like all those things. Not that you can't put a song that's, I mean, I have songs that are very deep and, and moments like this from our last album. And there's, a you know, there's multiple songs on this new album, Staple on that, I think is one of them. But um, for, for me, I try not to really think about it until after I'm done writing the song. Um, mm -hmm. And that just goes to the fact that it's hard enough to finish a song and then also have, well, should I be doing this or this or that? Um, so I, I, I'll write songs with like tons of swear words in them, like really nasty lyrics. And then I'll just, well, I guess I'm not using that song. <laughs> <laughs> not for MXPX anyway. I mean, uh, the, there's an edge, you know, we hit the edge, but yeah. I think as an artist, you need to live on the edge, but, um, but the edge is different than living like 20 meters past the edge. Yeah. I don't know why I'm using using the meter, <laughs> meters, but <laughs> uh, probably just because I got back from overseas. Um, anyway, yeah, I think, I think, um, I think that's, that's, some, that's very real. And, and I think that makes a lot of sense. And now that you're fully solo and you have been for a little while, but is there anything, anything with the pandemic, with the lockdowns, with any of the, with the world changing, do you think that affected any of these songs or you? in writing these songs? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, well, I think that that whole thing just gave me a lot of anxiety. Um, so some of the songs are, some of the songs I'm just kind of describing that. Um, the first one that comes to mind is words, words, words. It's kind of just like a portrait of anxiety. <laughs> and mm. I've never, I've never really been much of an anxious person. And so that whole thing, and I think being in Texas and away from my family, my, you know, all my family's on the West Coast and, mm -hmm. um, and just feeling very isolated. I mean, they still haven't even come to see me yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I mean, I have been out there to see them, but like no one has come to see me for years. Um, and uh, and I, that just all rolled up into into some into mm -hmm. some stress that I had never had before. So yeah, I did. I did write a few, at least that one. I'm trying to think if there's any others that are about that. Yeah, I think also just being an artist, we have a I don't know, like a a delayed sense of 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 uh, what it means to be living your life, and that's a very broad statement, but. I guess what I'm trying to say is, is when you 
grow up doing music, when you grow up touring, the you know, around the country, the world, wherever, you're just so busy doing that, that once you kind of settle into like a normal life, a normal life, right? Like more of a regular schedule where you're not traveling all the time. And there's people that aren't, are doing things that aren't music that are traveling all the time too. But um, once you settle into that, it's usually later than most people in their lives. And and I feel like that could be true for you too. Like you moving out to Texas later in your life, I mean, later in your life, you're young, but uh, you were already an adult, right? And so, yeah. so doing that, maybe that's partly what it is too, is having these realizations that everybody else probably had like earlier than us. Uh-huh. And it's things that I'm just still just having sometimes, you know, because, <laughs> uh, Cause I'm still, you know, I, sometimes I live that, you know, when, we, when, when the pandemic happened and, and everything got shut down in our minds, we might not ever tour the world again. I might not go to Paris ever again. I don't know. I still haven't been there since, since, you know, then, but, um, I guess I haven't been there since the last time I was there, which is like 2017. <laughs> um, so yeah, all these things can just flood in but also having that that artist thing what it, which is a little different for everybody but i think you still have it where you spent your young adult years in a band touring having a group having people right there with you if you need something somebody will help you do it you know if you have a question you ask your tour manager or whatever <laughs> maybe that's you i yeah. don't know but um <laughs> i've talked about this a little bit on the podcast before but like it's it's like a, a weird version of like uh, being like a child celebrity. It's not that you were super famous, but it was you were doing things out of the ordinary for a kid, yeah. kid your age, a young adult your age. Um, and I wonder what that does to, to each of us. It's, it's, you know, how we react to it can be different. But for you, you're drowning yourself in ponds in your dreams. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Have you looked it up? Have you looked any of these dreams up in like a dream uh, I have in a dream dictionary or yeah. I haven't. I haven't. I mean, maybe I probably should. Yeah, maybe <laughs> you should. <laughs> maybe that make you more anxious, but maybe it would put yeah, your mind I, at ease. I mean, it, it can't be good though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Drowning yourself? Drowning, probably battles, not. <laughs> car crashes. <laughs> I wonder if it's like okay, like you, you. There's a battle. There's two things in you inside you battling, and you decide instead of confronting that battle to surrender that could be i don't yeah. know but whatever do you feel like it worked whatever you did there when you dreamt that did you wake up feeling more at ease that day or i did yeah i did because i yeah because in the dream i i succeeded mm. i did it i came out of the water and i and i stopped the battle so i i did feel good about it there's a, you can almost write a novel of you going to sleep dreaming. I think there was a, a novel series called the Tom, Thomas Covenant series. I could be a little off on that, but it was this guy with it. leprosy and he, I don't know, let's say he fell down and hit his head. I don't remember the, the exact thing and dr- wakes up in this fantasy world where he goes on this quest and in this fantasy world, much like John Locke in Lost, he doesn't have leprosy. John Locke isn't in a wheelchair on Lost. Um, it's kind of like that. Like you could, you, I could just see so much going on inside these these stories you're telling for just the yeah. songs, you know. <laughs> um, but it is, it, you know, it is interesting because you had an, a unique experience that I, I've never heard of really before because I've always heard. If you die in your dream, you die for real. You die in real life, yeah. Yeah. Right. I heard that too. Was your husband going like, <laughs> babe, that's fucked up? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Like, I'm a little scared now. Like, <laughs> what's going to happen? Is it like a, uh, uh, what's the movie where um, no matter what happens, like, if you survive death, it gets you somehow? Oh, yeah. Final Destination. Final Destination. I just watched it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I hope it's not like that. I hope not too. Yeah. It might just be that I continue to have dreams about it. <laughs> Let's hope so. Keep writing songs, keep dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. So what are so okay, the record just came out. Um what what else are you doing? You're doing my podcast. So everybody please listen to her album. Uh 
you have vinyl, you got, tell, tell yeah. everybody what you got going on and where they can find it. Yeah. So, uh, the record came out on double helix records, which is a small indie label out of Arizona. And, um, they are very vinyl focused. So we released it on vinyl. Um, there are 500 pressed and they're so awesome. Like they're so beautifully made, um, at Burlington in Vermont. Um, and there's 500 and there's 100 of each. Um, there's only a hundred of each variant cool. and um we left one so we decided the the all the themes of the vinyl on over on my patreon we like had a, a meeting and discussed like what should we you know what how do we want these to look and then we left one up to the pressing plant because their stuff is so artistic and and amazing you should really check out their instagram they they press just really beautiful vinyl and um, so they came up with a fifth. The fifth variant was like a mystery to to all of us, and uh, which was really fun to see what they did. And they basically took um, they took every color of vinyl that was in the um, in the artwork, and uh, and made this really cool um, splatter splatter vinyl for that. That's awesome. Love that. And uh, you can get it on. Uh, let's see. There's a number of places you can get it. Um, but right now you can only order it on hello merch, which is through the, through the, um, double helix. There's a link through the double helix. It's, I think it's hello merch. If you go to hello merch.com and then you find survival guide, that's where you can find the records right okay. now or at cool. shows. Cool. I've only played two shows so far since the record's been out, but, um, how are the shows going? Cool. What do you, what, what's your vibe Good. for shows nowadays? Are you still solo? Just you? Um, well, I did two record release shows and I had a drummer at both shows. One was here in San Antonio and one was in Phoenix. And um, I had a drummer for both shows and a guitar slash bass player for mm. both shows in varying um, to varying degrees. Cool. Like uh, in San Antonio, I had a guitar slash bass player for the whole set and he played on every song. And um, and then in Phoenix, just for two songs. Um and I'm hoping to continue with that with these San Antonio guys, like wherever we can go um, within within Breach. Mm -hmm. uh, in Phoenix, I had Bob. Do you know Bob Hogue from Pollen? Do you remember Pollen? Oh, Bob. No, I, I I think I've met him, but I don't really know him. No. Yeah. He produced the record. Okay. And, um, and he was the drummer he is the drummer for pollen as well so he drummed on the record too awesome. he produced it and played played the live drums and and so and that was in in phoenix so for the phoenix show he came in and played drums for that oh that's awesome which was really, okay yeah it was really great i'll have to make a point to meet him because i think chris Rowe from the ataris is friends with him right oh yeah they're yeah they're good, good friends. friends okay mm -hmm. that make that that's where i always hear his name is is from from Chris. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so so you can get the record. Um, Hello Merch .com. Send me the link, you know, and I'll I'll yeah. put it in the show notes. For people can click on it, or at least copy paste it. Um, cool. What about finding you online? How you how you, what are you up to these days? Where are you at mostly? Um, I'm still doing Patreon and Twitch. Uh, I've been streaming. I've been streaming. Usually twice a week on Twitch, I'll do um, I'll do one stream where I live learn a song, and I started playing an MXPX song. I started playing, uh, I started covering uh, "Move to Bremerton." Oh, nice! <laughs> awesome. I have to check that out. All right, that's uh, that's the price of admission, right there, people. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you can. Anyone can come request that I play "Move to Bremerton" anytime. Um, and I need to add more. One of my, uh, one of the people that comes to watch me regularly, his screen name is MXPX1989, I think. Oh, so nice. Wow. He, and he's in Italy. Yeah. Italy. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so that is at, um, my handle on Instagram and Twitch is Survival Guide Music um, and on TikTok. And then in a lot of other places, it's just Survival Guide Without Vowels, like my website and the Patreon Um R S R V V L G D. Cool. We'll put it up. Right on. Well, how are you on TikTok? Do you spend time on there? 
Or you just put things no, up? No, I'm, 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 I'm floundering. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I, a, if you don't play I the game, ideas. it's rough. I have ideas of things to do. Because I do, I mean, my stream, my stream produces so much content that mm-hmm. I could put on TikTok in yeah. pieces. And I think it's just, it's just that I really need to get into a habit or a routine of pulling clips and, and uploading them. And I just have not. I've given myself the excuse of, you know, working on the record, being so focused on the record. And now that the record is out and done, I mean, I should, that's not very logical because I should have been working on that to help promote the record. You're, but, you're, I mean, you're spot on, but I did the same thing. I mean, there's things that I wanted to have done two months before the record came out that still aren't done now. And the records, our record's yeah. been out since September. <laughs> Your record or, is great, August. by the way. I oh, thank you. Tell you congrats also. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. that. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, I you're right. I, I think the routine thing is is spot on because that's the only way I can kind of get into doing regular social media, this and that, like editing videos, clipping out things. Like I've I've been there and I I will get there again, but it is one of those like, you know, up and down to to maintain that fully you know, that's where you get, you get like these YouTubers coming on their YouTube saying like, I quit because I'm burnt out and now I'm never going to, you know, you always have to pivot as an artist. And I think that's yeah. what keeps artists interested in doing what they're doing, but also it'll keep their, their audience interested as well. Um, and then, yeah, bring back the classics now and again, keep people happy, but always innovating, always changing it up. Um, whether that's like you're saying, pulling those clips, if you haven't done that yet, you should probably do that, but, (laughs) but you don't have to do that all the time. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those things. Like, I think we talked about this last time. There's no easy button. There's, um, it's just, there's always going to be hustle to do as an artist, as a solo artist, you're going to have way more jobs than you can really handle. Um, totally. So I was just thinking content so, creation is like a job, yeah. you know, that's like a full-time job. It's it's like five full-time jobs and yeah, <laughs> don't beat yourself up over it. I mean, do, do what you can do, do what you feel like works. And, and it's usually what you, what you focus on will work eventually, right? Like yeah. we're still working on this music thing. It's not like there's yeah. any, I mean, there's sort of success, but I mean, there's always someone more successful than you and there's always someone less successful. So it always has to be about your life, where you're at and your happiness. And I mean, it's not always about your happiness, I guess, but um, (laughs) if that were true, we're all failing miserably, but, (laughs) but no, to keep it positive, it really, you know, I, I think, I think you're doing great and never beat yourself up over it because this, you did it. You, you made a record it's out. People have, yeah. you know, there's vinyl. You're only going up from here. So well, I, I just feel like that's just a great milestone in anybody's career to do what you've done. So um, let me know next time. Let's, you know, get me on the record. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I owe I you. Wanted to, I wanted to this time. And it was just uh, the studio. With, I don't know really how to do that from... Uh, from unless, you know, whoever's producing is like equipped or if we had planned better. I, I Next time I will plan better. That's what it is. I wanted to uh, to talk to you about, though, like I wanted to tell you about, uh, you know, as a, as a fellow musician, about my experience of going to the studio by myself. I, when you recorded your solo stuff, did was it solo? Was it like you recorded it yourself? Did you like how 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 did that work? A lot of it I record myself. Some of it, um, some of it I'll record with Bradley Miranda, who at the time I was doing a lot of solo stuff was working for me just as my engineer and uh, mixer. Um, so yeah, it's different because I own my own studio and it's just yeah. like it's here. And it is weird when I'm by myself doing a full session. Like it's nice to have somebody around. So pl- I would love to hear hear your experience. What was it? What was it like? It was just crazy. It was like, um, it was very, 
stressful because I had never met Bob and mm. I didn't really know anything about him. Um, and I brought my songs and, you know, I, ha I had demoed all the songs and had them and had sent them to him. And I got to the studio and he hadn't had time to listen to them yet. So we like listened to all my demos there, like the first day in the studio. Yikes. I was just like, uh, I don't, he might hate these songs. <laughs> did you, did you talk to him on the phone before? We did a Zoom meeting. A Zoom meeting, okay. So, yeah, so we did we did meet, hmm. technically. That's yeah. good. I mean, that's yeah. that's step yes. one to meet. Yeah. Um, we, we talked to a few producers on a few different records on the phone, and this was mm -hmm. before Zoom existed and all that, but on the phone, and you kind of get a sense of, like, what it's like to maybe what they were going to be like. And that's the best we really got. Um, we did do some in-person meetings um, now and again, Um but it is strange to like go meet somebody that does this all the time. So they may be like, unless you get the right person that has that, that, that sensibility of like a, a almost like a, a bedside manner, right? Because a mm -hmm. producer has to be kind of delicate with artists. Their artists are very tender hearted when it comes yeah. to their <laughs> own songs and, and things like that. So, so how did you, okay, so I, I can only imagine sitting there with your producer while, and it's not like you're like this well-known artist that's been around for years to, you know, with platinum records, like you're, you're trying to get this going, right? You're trying to like, yeah. and it's like, you didn't even listen to it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, it's. I don't want to throw Bob Hogue under the bus, but I would <laughs> have never admitted that I hadn't listened to it. I, what I would have done is gone, you know, I listened to it, but I, I really want to sit down and listen to it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, just to get, you know, for your peace of mind that yeah, like, yeah. I care. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wasn't too, I wasn't like really um, upset by that so much as like, I didn't, I didn't so much feel like it was rude. I more was like, Oh, I, like what happens if he hates this song? You right. Know? What, yeah. Like he doesn't even know what he's just walked into. Well, it's hard. Know? It's hard to. I mean, it's hard to get. Everybody works a little differently, but I need a couple listens to a song before I really start getting into it because I might hate something at first, and then that's actually what I end up loving. So uh -huh. I'm weird like that though, but. Maybe he just knows what he wants to hear right away, and it has nothing to do with whether the songs are good. It's just like, okay, we're going to do this. And some people are just very much sound oriented, um, rather than mm -hmm. than than uh, songwriting oriented when it comes to production. So, what kind of producer was Bob? Did he have you switch any parts around? Was it more about the the tones of how everything sounded and the performance? Yeah, I was really, really surprised with how it went um, because he loved the songs and I was so prepared, uh, you know, this being my first, the first songs that I've ever written by myself, I was prepared for them to just get chopped up and, and spit out in a different way. Mm -hmm. And uh, he basically, he loved most of what I did, we did a little bit of rearranging some of the songs that either obviously weren't, you know, a full thought or, um, or, so, you know, he had suggestions on certain things like, oh, no, I think this is the pre-chorus and this is a chorus, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then we used a lot of my demo tracks because I had recorded my demos. So I had all the all the stems mm -hmm. for all of that. And I brought them all with me. I didn't think we were going to use them, but we used a lot. Like we used a lot of my um, my drum tracks that I had, like electronic drum beats that I had made. Yeah. Um, and he drummed over them in spots to to enhance them. And that's that's pretty much what he did. That was so amazing to me, and is exactly what I would hope for in a producer. Is that he he'd listen to the song and be like, okay, we need, you know, this, this verse is, is um, kind of sparse. Like let's put some, maybe some strings, maybe some marimbas or, you know, like just various uh, instruments and pads and things that made certain 
pieces shine more or, you know, adjusted the dynamic. Um, it was, it was really awesome. And it somehow like I, going into it like that, being like, I don't know this man. I've, I don't, <laughs> I don't know anything about what he does and he has not listened to my songs. And then it was like, he it was like he knew exactly what i was going for yeah with the music and um and he only enhanced it all and made it and made it better without completely chopping it to pieces yeah congratulations really cool. bob you, pull, <laughs> yeah. you pulled out of it apparently he didn't have to listen to it so that's great <laughs> actually that's that that sounds spot on i keep saying spot i never say spot on only this podcast <laughs> spot on um that just sounds good because I can only imagine how much compli more complicated it would be to take everything you've done and then completely change it and start from yeah. scratch with electronic drums. Like I, I don't know how to do electronic drums. Like, yeah, I've never, I've tried and they've never been good. I'll tell you that. So like whatever <laughs> you're doing, cool. Um, <laughs> But blending the the live drums with the electronic drums, I'm gonna listen back now that I know that and just yeah, listen he to did it. Did it so well. There's times where I can't even like it's not it's it's to, I thought it might end up being like oh the drums came in you know like mm -hmm. it like it'd be sort of jarring but he blended them perfectly. That's cool. So. Would you, did you decide on on Doug or was it a label thing or was it Kind of both on Bob. On Bob. Sorry, Bob. Doug. So what did I say? Doug. <laughs> Bob. Um, I think I know it I was. Doug. It was. Uh, it was a label thing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Because they're um, from. They, yeah, they're all. Arizona. They're all from. They're all from Phoenix, and um, they've worked together before. And he, Bob, is a. He's like a Phoenix go-to staple yeah. guy that everyone loves to work with. So it just all kind of fell into place. We were looking at a number of different producers and it just like really worked out that the timing was perfect to work with Bob at that time. And I was open to it because I really didn't have, um, I mean, I had a very short list. I don't remember who was on it, but, mm -hmm. uh, but I really didn't know, you know, what would happen with a producer. And it's been a while since I've recorded with a, with a producer like that. That's cool. Did so? Did you sign uh, a one record deal? Was it like multiple records? It's like a open ended. Open ended. Basically. Yeah. Cool. That's good. Yeah, I think you know record labels are there. There's been an evolution that sort of happened. You know where they never wanted to do that in the past. Um, but artists just don't want to be tied down these days. I, I feel yeah. like that's definitely changed over the years where in the, in back in the day, you know, you wanted to get signed to a label. I mean, MXP signed, I don't know how many records it was like four or six albums. Like it was like four albums with two, two albums as a, an option. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the time you go on like, Oh my gosh, that seems like a lot that seems like I'm going to be really yeah. old by the time we f finish this contract, <laughs> you know, and what I always heard back was, Oh, well, that's just the industry standard, blah, 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 blah you know, whatever. Yeah. But it's like, finally artists are like, Hey, I kind of think this makes more sense. Let's try this. And, 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 and I think also I could be wrong, but maybe there's more artists working at labels or running labels. Yeah. That could th be than there used to be, which, yeah. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's like all these factors, but it, yeah. it, that's much better. So Yeah, I think the indies also have to kind of um, adjust to the fact that that artists could could release our own stuff. Yes, you know? absolutely. Like we could easily release our own stuff. So, the, so they can't be too, they can't be so, at least not a smaller indie label can't be so like uh, constricting, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. of the of the artists. Yeah. Absolutely. I was surprised back in the day when we were on A&M Records. We had just released, I think it was um, Before Everything and After in 2001, 2002, somewhere in there. And we asked them, hey, can we release a 7-inch on Fat Records? And they're like, 
Sure. <laughs> we're like, really? <laughs> cool. We thought you'd say no. Yeah, that but is surprising. <laughs> yeah, so we got we released, you know, whatever it was, like um I think it was the broken no, it was the Renaissance EP. The Renaissance EP. We re- we released that. That was even an EP. It wasn't even a seven inch. Um but back then it was a little less complicated because there there wasn't all this like IP intellectual property like of of yeah. like digital files and like that's just yeah, so Yeah, it was like a physical limited pressing probably and Yeah, then... exactly. They're like ah whatever. Cut but and dry. nowadays it's so it's everybody's so like okay, we got to get the contracts, we got to get the rights to this, 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 this. And if you leave one little thing out, you could get you know ripped off later in life or whatever it is, but Yeah. It's wild. Um I would say another thing that people don't really think about is uh, songwriting and publishing credits and how you have those on like registered with it could be like ASCAP or whatever your PRO is ASCAP or BMI. Um, I had like songs that I had like half of the songs were wrong and like somebody like I had like somebody else's name that had written them and, Oh, and wow. it was like it was like a bunch of wrong stuff. I had like some song I had never written that I was getting paid for. And I'm like, wait, that's <laughs> not right. I don't that's I didn't write that song. So I'm like, okay, if that guy is getting if I'm getting his money, who's getting my money? You know, like yeah. <laughs> it just it's just like the deeper you go into like the music business and like the back the back, you know, back room of it, it's wild. And it took like uh, Tom Chichillo, my business partner, manager guy, he I mean, he was working on this stuff for years and I think it just recently kind of got fixed up last year, but oh, wow. that's something to like, if you've been in multiple bands on multiple labels and you're a solo, you know, now you're a solo artist, that's something to look into and look into your songs. Every song you have registered, look where it's registered, look who the songwriter is and who the, you know, owner of the rights are and like all of that. Um, that's something I would suggest anybody do, you know, if you've, if you've got a body of work that you like you do. Yeah. Cause uh, it, yeah, I have, I have looked into it a little bit before, but I've barely scratched the surface cause it's a mess. It is a mess. No matter what, even if it's not wrong or everything, you know, it's still going to be messy. You're going to be like, what, what am I looking at? Yeah. Here? <laughs> it's wild. Uh, the other day, Tom said to me, to me, my manager, he goes, if you had to do the paperwork for all the stuff that you guys do, you would quit the music business. You would not be an artist. You would you would not do this. And I think I'm like thinking back to, I, things have gotten more and more complicated as the years go by and co- corporations, they're, all they do is just more and more bureaucracy and like make you sign off on things and pay for things and all that. So, I mean, that's, that's obviously not going to change in life, but I'm sure he's true. I mean, I was really thinking about that and going, would I really quit the music business? <laughs> I mean, I probably what just was he, simplify. Was he, implying, was, was he implying that he was getting <laughs> he's, over it? He's or? close. Uh, yeah, he's always on the on the edge. <laughs> but I think we're always, all of us are always on the edge of something. I mean, the, the, yeah. even, even the country we live in is probably closer to the edge of insanity than we think. But um, <laughs> I'm not here to, I'm not here to like ruin people's days though. Um, I, I, I don't know the music business. I think what I would do is I would just pull back. I would simplify. And you know, if you can't handle selling five things, sell one, you know, sell two, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And, and it does get hard and it does get overwhelming. Like, like you're saying, trying to like, you know, you should be doing clips and pulling out things for, you know, promoting the new album and all that, but it's just easier to go on my podcast and talk about it. And, and then, you, yeah, exactly. then there's more clips you're going to have to pull. So yeah, it's never ending, but it would, we'd, we'd all be bored to death if there was nothing like this to do. So true. Kind of true. grateful. I know I, there are parts about it that I really don't like, but overall I, I truly enjoy getting to be a musician and, uh, and all the things that go along with it. Absolutely. Most of it. There's some things. But I mean, most of it's good. honestly, you should be talking about these death dreams to everybody. And it's fascinating. It's 
it ties me to the record more personally now that I've heard the stories about it. I think everybody needs to hear that. So, well, I'll keep I'll keep going. Then. Keep keep going. <laughs> keep talking. Keep keep adding yourself into people's lives, and uh, people will have better lives for it. I hope so. That'd be great. Yeah. Emily Whitehurst, everyone, go check out Survival Guide, Death Dreams is the album. Add it to your library. If you want the vinyl, go to hellomerch.com. Look up Survival Guide. Find it. Get it. If you're in San Antonio, make sure you see her live. Whenever you're going to be next, it will be at some point. And then other random cities, right? Yeah. <laughs> now and yeah, again. For sure. Yep. <laughs> right on. <laughs> uh, anything we missed? Anything you want to you wanna add? Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, the 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 next thing, the next semi big thing related to the album is that I have formulated a cocktail recipe for every song on the album, and I'm going to release it. I'm gonna nice compile it, photograph it, and uh, and release that as a companion piece to the album, just for fun. That is cool. What is your favorite drink before we go? Favorite drink oh, just on there? In general? No, well, oh, sure, in, in general, mine? sure, but that's that's on there. Uh, what inspired the drink? <laughs> well, it, it was super fun to to uh, to create them because I would take, uh, like, let's say Lady Neptune, for example. Um, I wanted that. I I had the idea of making it a a blue drink and making it kind of look like the ocean. So it's got um, it's got it's a tiki drink because it's that's something you would drink by the ocean. The dream was about a pond, though. I <laughs> yeah, but it that. works. It works. <laughs> I mean, Neptune is in the ocean, right, Lady Neptune? Yeah. I, I wow. Don't I just, go back yet. Don't go I, back now. You're good. <laughs> uh, I think people are with you. It's uh, the, <laughs> okay. It okay. represents water and drowning. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so it's got egg white in it. So when you shake it, it's got like uh, you know, it's blue with a white like fr froth on top. So it kind of looks like the ocean and it's tropical. Um, like blood perfume. I made that one. Um, you know, it's red mm -hmm. and, uh, it's bl blood, like you could say, and it's got blood orange liqueur in it. So, um, it was fun, like really theming, um, each of the, each of the songs and, nice. uh, for, for, for various reasons. Uh, I think the blood perfume, uh, the bad little seed might be my favorite one. Cause I, I made it, it's like a whiskey drink. With um, with amaretto and walnut liqueur, so it's kind of like a like a Manhattan ish or an old fashioned, but with a more of a some seed. That's interesting. Walnut. In I'm not a huge fan of walnuts, but I'd try it. It's it's pretty good. It's like a black walnut um, liqueur, so it's not um, it's not really sweet like amaretto, but there is amaretto in it mm. as well. To, for almond, almond and walnut. And is that what food. amaretto is? Is almonds with vanilla? Mm -hmm. It's like vanilla and almond like mix, or am I just adding uh, the, almond, the the vanilla I, in there? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's, I don't think there's vanilla. I think it's, um, I think it's just the flavor of the almond, like the ar almond kernel. I think has that has that flavor. Almaretto. It, <laughs> it always trips me out when, <laughs> like, um, I was in Europe. Well, I've been in Europe a few times, but in Europe, talking to a friend about a flavor, like something like amaretto. Like amaretto is something that isn't a flavor, really. I I don't know what it is. It's like a name. Mm -hmm. And so he was trying to explain, I don't even know what it was. It was like a name of a, a flavor. And I'm like, what is that? He's like, well, it's like an orange type thing, but it's not an orange. And it, And it was like, this must be what it's like just not to understand anything like, because if you have no understanding of what an orange is, how do you know what orange is? Yeah. Right. And and that's yeah. exactly what I was getting is he's like, well, it's this thing, but, but it's this name. And I'm like, I have no connection to that name whatsoever. Yeah. Weird. weird. <laughs> that happened to me before I had, I was trying to explain to my nephew the flavor of an artichoke. <laughs> It was very difficult. It tastes like an artichoke. <laughs> yeah, it tastes like butter. I love artichokes, by the way. Like the me too. The dipping in the the sauce and then mm -hmm. eat, yeah, scraping it. Yeah, artichoke. Yeah, that is an interesting one. Like, uh, but but at the same time, like, what's the difference between that and chicken? 
Uh-huh. Chicken tastes <laughs> yeah, like chicken. Explain, yeah. Artichoke tastes like, tastes like artichoke. <laughs> <sighs> Deep thoughts. Yes. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you do the baking thing. Like you even love to bake so much that you write a song called Pie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Very I, cool. I was pretty stoked to incorporate a baked good. And what is the album? We might as well talk about it. I didn't look at the lyrics because the lyrics, I don't know, I couldn't find the lyrics. But um, <clears throat> I was just listening to the song and I was like, this has to be about something, something evil. <laughs> but is it uh, not? Is it about something sweet? Uh, well, it is kind of, it's, it's about, um, it's basically about wanting to protect someone who's younger and, and, and less experienced from, uh, just some of the, some of the, you know, evil or bad things or things that, that we all have to go through. And, uh, I just was describing that, like uh, what I was picturing was the, um, you know, the, the scenes from old cartoons where they would set a pie on a windowsill Mm -hmm. and everyone smells the and everyone's drawn to the pie. On the yes. Window. That was kind of the imagery that I was that I was thinking of. And the line just says, you look like a fresh baked pie. Uh, their tongues are hanging out. And it's kind of like a, like a. Yes. Just be careful. Yes. Know, like, wow. Okay. I, I, I can see it completely. So I was right. It's both sweet and. Yes. It's w- yes. a warning of the darker things in life. Yeah. Well done. I, I like it. I, I thought also like Bad Little Seed had this like dancey vibe. This is like real timeless, like almost like daft punk. Like you're like tapping into oh, like awesome. a whole new thing that seems very, I don't know, mature. I don't even know if mature is the right word because that sounds wrong. <laughs> it, I, I think I say that because it's not punk. It's like... Uh-huh. um it's like real mu like you would hear like a real m- musical piece of music, right? Like instead of just like three <laughs> chords, that's what I felt like. I was like, okay, there's some more, like even more going on musically in this. So, yeah, thank cool. you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. I think I think we talked about the record. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I think we covered <laughs> it. We got a lot. Right on. Um, appreciate it, and uh, psh- make sure you write down those dreams and keep writing and. Yes, I will. We'll do it again. Also, thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, like over the last, I, it really, it really was instrumental when we talked the first time I was like, all right, I can do this. I can do this. And I finally did it. So I feel, I feel like you, you're in the thank yous. Oh, I am. Excellent. Thank you. That's cool. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Emily Whitehurst, everybody go check out survival guide, death dreams out right now. Yes, thanks so much.